the big news with Infinium Labs is that they actually have the Phantom at E3, and you can play it. Yeah, the Phantom does exist. They're really coming in under the radar, and they're doing some very, very exciting things. Nintendo came out with a brand new Legend of Zelda trailer. Boom, here comes this game that looks like Lord of the Rings. One of our big announcements at E3 was the Matrix Online between Sega and Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment. The PS2 price drop is something the whole industry has been waiting for, so that's definitely good news for everybody. Yes, finally, Microsoft got EA to sign up to make their games working with Xbox Live. It's going to really, really help Microsoft gain a foothold in the wars with Sony. Another great announcement from Nintendo was the uh, Nintendo DS, the new handheld system. And it's basically, it's, it looks like a Game Boy, but it has two screens, and one of them is a touch screen. Sony's got a lot going on. They have a new handheld system called the PlayStation Portable, and this thing is a sexy device. It's going to be the iPod of gaming. Last year, it was all about Half-Life 2. This year, it's the battle of the PSP versus the Nintendo DS. You wouldn't think a couple of little handhelds could create such a king-size craze, but everyone wants to get their hands on these things. Now, let's talk about what everyone wants most. Number 5. Splinter Cell 3, you know, it walks right in the footsteps of the first two games. Amazing visuals, really great lighting, and, and, you know, I think we can expect some innovative stealth ideas where you have to hide in the shadows and really surprise your enemies. It's an incredible game. I'm a huge Splinter Cell fan. The Splinter Cell 3 is going to introduce a few new moves, some new ideas, and multiplayer is going to be really cool as well. So it's a really exciting franchise. I think it's one of the best stealth action games out there, and I can't wait. Number four. Fable is an outstanding action RPG where players take control of a young boy and take him through his adult life. And along the way, they get to make very uh, interesting and very deep moral decisions about the kind of person they're going to be. So they can be a very famous, very decent, very good hero, or they can be a very evil, very mischievous, very bad hero. And the world will react to the choices you make. Fable is one of those high concept games, and it's really just one of the most innovative experiences out there. Number three. Jade Empire is an action role-playing game being developed by Bioware exclusively for Microsoft. You role-play as a martial arts master. Uh, it's an epic story. They're used to from Bioware and a role-playing tradition. And you've got real-time combat system. You switch between up to 30 different fighting styles in real time. I can't wait to sit down with the game, develop my characters, and start learning new powers, new martial arts moves. I think that's where the one will come in, and I think people are going to be excited about that. Number two. The Xbox, you know, you get a lot of PC snobs who say that the PC is the only way to play Doom with a keyboard and a mouse and whatnot. Doom 3 looks amazing on the Xbox. It really shows what the Xbox is capable in comparison to the other consoles that are currently out there. The Xbox game is looking amazing at this point. Just the atmosphere that the game creates itself is just going to be a big boom, you know, for the Xbox users out there. Number one. Hands down, the biggest Xbox game everyone's excited about is Halo 2. Uh, I got to play a little bit of it, and it's just awesome. I, could, I couldn't stop, and I was mad when they had to peel me away from the controller. I only got to play one level, but it was just incredible. For them to be able to take the graphics of the Xbox and be able to take it to the next level, I mean, it's, it's just a, such a gorgeous sight. The game itself, the game mechanics, all everything that they're doing in the game is just, I'm really excited about it. Probably me wasting hours and hours of my free time playing that game. Let's consult the Magic Cube to find out. Number five. Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. It sounds stupid, but it's a platformer you play with bongo drums. And uh, the amazing thing about it is, like, imagine a uh, kind of punch out style fighting where you're facing another person. The left drum is your left hand, the right drum is your right hand. So you're like beating the guy up with your two drums like this. And it's just very, it just feels really original. You haven't played anything like this. And likewise, when you're running sideways, you tap the right drum to run, you hit both, you clap your hands, you do all these things to make the character perform stuff. It's a big difference from playing with a little toy pad. Number four. Nintendo is always taking these crazy risks with their franchise. There are so many different versions of Mario, from Mario Party to Super Mario Sunshine to Paper Mario. Paper Mario 2 is the latest iteration of that. Every time I bring somebody over to look at this, they, it blows their mind. Because we're now at the point where graphically we can start taking these risks with games. And you create a game that looks like it's flat and the characters have this kind of two-dimensional element, but in a pseudo-3D environment, it looks great. It looks great. The one on the 64 was so awesome. I hope that they make more copies of this one so we can all have it. Number three. Resident Evil 4 is going to be groundbreaking in many ways. The graphics raise the bar. The uh, gameplay has evolved. Um, the zombies now, they work together. It creates new game. You, you'll, be, you'll have to escape to roofs trying to, you know, they'll put a ladder up in a window. You'll
you'll skip to a roof to try to avoid them. You'll have to, you know, hold them off at the window they're coming out of. Yeah, unbelievable gameplay. It looked great. The physics engine, the uh, zombies are getting knocked back when you're hitting them in specific parts, taking off their heads. So it's very cool. Oh, Metroid Prime. That's um, another one that uh, adds multiplayer to the mix. It's going to be another exclusive that's really going to be, you know, set the GameCube apart. Uh, the, the multiplayer is amazing. This time they added more storyline, more cutscenes, and multiplayer. Deathmatch, you turn into the ball, get all types of power-ups. Yeah, the, the fact that you can change in the ball on the fly, you lay bombs, you get all kinds of weapons. Some of the weapons can freeze your adversaries. Good stuff. Yeah, all, all new gameplay. It's going to be very fresh. I like it. Number one. A lot of people were expecting Nintendo to push the cartoony style of the Wind Waker release last year, but then all of a sudden, Adult Link came out, really visceral and violent, swinging its sword, looking incredibly heroic, and the crowd just went wild. It's a mature, look and take on a Zelda game. Can't wait to see this one. That's a far... Number five. Great Turismo 4 will be launched in November 2004 and will feature more than 500 cars, up to 100 courses, and I have online mode as well as a variety of other modes and features that really not only act as a driving game but really celebrate automotive culture. It was tight. Yeah, I liked it. The, the steering's better than the, the third one. The third one to me, the steering was kind of too constrictive. This one seems like it's more, more realistic. Number four. Halo Killer for the PlayStation 2. Everything I've seen on it looks really, really cool. You're fighting against this very, very strange kind of pseudo Nazi looking characters, and the graphics look great. It looks like it's really, really taking advantage of what the PS2 can do. That system still has life in it. Killzone is PlayStation 2's answer to Halo on the Xbox. It's kind of a squad based science fiction shooter. The graphics are incredible. So finally, PlayStation 2 gamers can say, hey, we have our Halo 2. Number three. Prince of Persia was one of the best games last year, and it's awesome that it's getting a sequel. The gameplay was awesome. Visually, it had a really unique style, and it had a great charm about it. You're going to get all the great stuff, all the great visuals from the first game, but there's going to be so much more variety, so many more challenges and things you haven't seen in games before. Prince of Persia 2, I'm really excited to it because the first one was just a brilliant game. It was astounding. It was, it was fun. It's the kind of game that you just pick up and you want to play all the way through. You don't want to stop. Final Fantasy XII is probably going to be one of the most unique games in the series. It's being made by the Final Fantasy Tactics team, who usually makes small games that have a hardened following. Final Fantasy XII is one of the most highly anticipated games of, of the last 10 years, I want to say. We played Final Fantasy XI, which was an MMO. It was very different. We played Crystal Chronicles, Tactics, all very good games, but nothing beats a traditional RPG from Square. Number one. The graphics, they stepped it up a whole nother level, you know? That's what I'm in for. You know, I want to feel like that's me on the screen. Snake's my man, you know? The movements feel real now. They're more realistic. To me, it's a much more open-ended world. You can find cover anywhere. You lay in the grass for not too long, or else you get leeches on you, and the snakes are in there. It's, it's much more realistic. Much more. So he has to eat snakes to survive. <laughs> You got Sony and Nintendo going at it in an entirely different forum. It's going to be an interesting thing to watch. The DS looks like it's the lower priced, more accessible system that's going to take some more risks. Sony, though, they're masters of marketing and getting their electronics out there. The PSP could be what is essentially the next Walkman. We bugged just about everyone at the convention center to find that elusive best in show.